Recording in progress. Well, happy Father's Day to all you fathers and all you mothers that are stepping in for fathers. Amen. A great day to be alive. Amen. The day that the Lord has made. Amen. I did not advertise this uh, meeting because I did not want to intrude on anybody's time um, on this great day. I know everybody's out doing what they're doing, so I want to record this message and I'll post it. Amen. So here we go. We're going to continue on with in our, in our lesson that we've been dealing with, the nine spiritual gifts. Um, and uh, we are, we did the discerning of spirits, the word of wisdom, and today we're going to do the word of knowledge. Next week we will be dealing with the diverse kinds of tongues, interpretation of tongues, and prophecy. Those three. We may do them together. We may do them separate. But we'll see. I don't really know right now. Let's look at the scripture here and let's get started. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as ye were led. Wherefore I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God, calleth the Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operation, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another's diverse kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and that self same Spirit, Dividing to every man severally as he wills. Father, we thank you. We praise you for all that you're doing. We thank you that you love us and you care for us, God. And even on this day that we set aside to honor fathers, we ask a blessing on all the fathers that are out there, Lord God. Those that are doing all that they can and those that, 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 that need to step up. We ask you to put a little fire up under them in the name of Jesus to get them to step up to where they and own up to their responsibility. So we just pray, Lord God, that you would touch even now as we go into the service, Lord God. Touch your manservant that you, Lord God, will be able to use him for your glory, for your honor. In Christ Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. So we're, we're going to do a quick review, okay? Um. Uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 gives the purpose of this teaching. I would not have you to be ignorant. Ignorant is not knowing, and it is also knowing wrong. Hmm? Now, to give... So I said... Uh, to give knowledge that will help a person to know the meaning of the operation of each gift. So when confronted with the gifts in operation, he or she may be able to know which gift is in operation. Scripture reference, 1 Corinthians 12, 7 through 11. All right, we just read that. For this teaching, I have ranged the gifts into groups of three each. The revelation gifts, the gift of discerning spirits, the gift of word of wisdom, the gift of word of knowledge. These three reveal something. The vocal gifts, the gifts of diverse kinds of tongues, the gift of interpretation of tongues, the gift of prophecy. These three say something. The power gifts, the gifts of healing, the gift of faith, the gift of working of miracles, these three do something. Amen. Amen. The revelation gifts reveal something. The vocal gifts say something. The power gifts do something. Let's briefly define each gift. Brief, very brief <laughs> one-liners. The revelation gifts the gift of discerning the spirits reveals the origin of the manifestation. The gift of word of wisdom reveals something in the future. The gift of the word 
of, wisdom, of, of knowledge reveals something in the present or past. Wisdom reveals the future. Knowledge reveals the past. Or the, these three reveal something. The vocal gifts, the gifts of diverse kinds of tongues. A message by the Spirit given in tongues. A gift, the gift of interpretation of tongues. The interpretation of a message given in tongues. The gift of prophecy, a message given to edify, exhort, and comfort. These three say something. The power gifts. The gifts of healing, a manifestation by the Spirit to heal. The gift of faith, a spoken gift that takes you through a situation. It's a miracle. The gift of working of miracles, a miracle that the Spirit performs through a believer that changes the situation. The gift of faith takes you through the situation. The gift of working of miracle changes the situation. Amen. Amen. These three do something. We start. We started with the revelation gifts and the gift of discerning of spirits. Some translations say distinguishing of spirits. This gift distinguishes whether a manifestation is of God or some other spirit. It reveals the source of the manifestation. Hmm? By definition, this gift has to operate for all the gifts to tell if it's of God or not. Hmm? The question may be asked, if it's not of God, who is it of? The question is, the answer is, it could be a human spirit, an angelic spirit, a demon spirit. Okay? All right. The last week, we week before last, we did discerning the spirits. Last week, we did the gift of working the word, gift of the word of wisdom. Amen. Uh, and uh, we're going to deal just briefly with that and then we're going to get into today's lesson. This gift, the word of wisdom, reveals something in the future. It reveals what God wants you to do in the future for his purpose for you, for you, your church, or for the kingdom. It may manifest through a vision, a dream, or a trance. A person with the gift of prophecy may give a word of wisdom, a word of knowledge, or prophecy. What is, it, what is said determines which gift is being used. The gift of word of wisdom is often mistaken for prophecy because it deals with the future. Prophecy has a definition in scripture. See 1 Corinthians 14.3. Amen. Amen. Let's get into today's lesson. Amen. Don't want to be before you long because the word of knowledge that we're dealing with today is similar. Everything is the same except for the time zone that 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 that, that, that you're standing in. And this is where this is what we have to deal with. The gift of the word of knowledge, a manifestation of the Holy Spirit to reveal knowledge of something in the past or present. It is a word of knowledge. You don't have all of God's knowledge. <laughs> Nobody could take that. Hmm? He gives us just a word, just what is needed for his purpose in, in giving it to you. For that moment, this is one of the most used gifts. The, the, the revelation gifts, the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, word, the, 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 the discerning of spirits. These three gifts reveal something. And God has promised us in scripture that, that these gifts would operate. Amen. By way of the Holy Spirit. It didn't say the gifts would operate on everybody. But the Holy Spirit would reveal. He would take of God and give it unto us. So these things. These things that have been revealed by the Holy Spirit. They can be classified into the gifts. Amen. Let's look at the book of Luke. Um, just for. Just to get a little clarity here. And, 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 and put us on track. In the book of Luke, the 12th chapter, we're going to start at the first verse. Amen. In the meantime, when there was gathered together <coughs> an innumerable, <coughs> excuse me, innumerable multitude of people, insomuch that they trolled upon one another, he began to say to, unto his disciples, Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. 
And then he said this. I, want, I wanted to bring this out just for just just to get us to on a launching pad. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. We're talking about the revelation gifts. There is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. Hmm? Neither hid that shall not be known. See, God knows everything. <laughs> he knows everything you're thinking. He knows your intent of the heart. He knows your motives. And He can reveal it to others. Amen. Now, let, let's go to drop down. Therefore, the, whosoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that's what ye have spoken in the ear in the closet shall pro be proclaimed on the housetops. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that ye have no more that can they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed you has killed, has power to cast you into hell. That's, uh, that's a statement. Yeah, I say unto you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two fartlings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? And listen to this. For the, even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Such knowledge, <laughs> such knowledge that he has about us. How precious we are in his sight. The very hairs of our head are numbered. Hmm? Now, let's, let's stop that right there. And let's look at 11 and 12. And say, when they bring you into the synagogue, talking to the disciples and unto magistrates and powers, Take no thought how or what things you shall answer or what you shall say. Listen to this. For the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the same hour what you ought to say. And when it says teach you, it, 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 it's letting you know that there is there's a process there. And, and, and it's the word of knowledge in operation. He's going to give you, by way of the word of knowledge, He's going to give you exactly what to say. And, and let me tell you this. Anytime you're in a situation, you don't know what to do, two things don't do. Don't be fearful. Don't be anxious. Look to the Spirit. Look to the Holy Spirit that's in you to give you what you need at that hour. All right, let's look at the rest of the scriptures. We're going to start out in the book of John. Amen. In the book of John. Amen. The first chapter, we're going to look at this particular passage of scripture. Amen. When Jesus was 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 rounding up his his, his disciples, uh, he 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 was going through the towns and and he came up upon a couple of them, and one of the two in the forty verse, one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. And he first found his own brother Simon and said unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonas. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. Amen. Amen. Now, now that 42nd verse there, it tells us that, that, that Jesus had knowledge of Peter way before Peter even opened his mouth. Hmm? A word of knowledge. And, 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 and that word of knowledge got Peter's attention. Amen. The word of knowledge got his attention, just like he got Philip's. Amen. Amen. Thou art, thou art Simon. He told him his name. Then he told him who his daddy was, the son of Jonah. And, you, and I'm changing your name <laughs> to Cephas. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> he told him his name, told him his daddy's name, and then turned around and changed his name. Amen. <laughs> it's, 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 it's amazing or miraculous, if, if you let me say it that way. He started with a name and then changed it. I, I, I like the way he works. Amen. Then... Then in, in the fourth chapter, and we're going to start at the first verse, 
And this one is, has, some, has some doubt to it. I'm going I'm, to I'm be honest. It has some doubt. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. Let's go back. This story starts in the 22nd chapter, 22nd verse of the 3rd chapter after Jesus' uh, encounter with Nicodemus. And John is baptizing. But what the, the word of knowledge here is the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard. Now, if you tinker with this, you, you could say, well, he maybe, he maybe he didn't get it by way of the Spirit because they were in the same general geographical area. And 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 I'll and I'll and I'll leave that open. But he knew how the Pharisees had heard that, and it caused him to to move out. All right. So the fact is, he got the word of knowledge. It was revealed to him, and when it when it was revealed to him that that that, that the Pharisees had gotten that information, he didn't want no trouble. He was just starting his ministry, so he left Judea. And headed for Galilee. Amen. So that uh, there was a reasoning here. There, 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 there's a process. God just don't give knowledge just just for you to have knowledge, for you to be puffed up. He He don't give you knowledge for that. And 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 John one forty and eight when 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 he when he when he dealt with Philip and he dealt with. Uh, Philip, and then he, I mean, was it Philip or was it, that was Nathaniel. Mm-hmm. He, he saw him up under the tree. Mm-hmm. He said, before Philip called thee, huh, then thou was under the tree, I saw thee. Mm -hmm. See, that's knowledge. I, that's the knowledge that he has. He, it was revealed to him. And he gave that knowledge and it got his attention. Not only did he get his attention, but he dropped his nets and followed him. Hmm? So there's purpose in every time God does something. He don't just do something just to do it. He don't operate these gifts to show nobody off. That's the problem that's being that's, that's going on right now. And and just because a gift is operating through you, that don't make you no better than anybody else. It doesn't make you higher, more spiritual. It doesn't do anything for you other than the fact that God used you. That's a personal thing. Hmm? It should not be flaunted. Amen. And you should not stick out a, a shingle, hang out your shingle, that the word of knowledge is over here. <laughs> Come get a word. Amen. You shouldn't do that. Man, I know people do that, but 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 but, but character come first. Amen. I, I I teach it that way. That 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 the that the that the, that the fruit should come before you before God uses you, because if you if you get to being used, some people just don't know what to do. If you ain't got no character, you ain't got no fruit. Then 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 you 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 could get big headed. Things could happen, and you could get off. And that's what we don't want to happen. Let the, let, the, let, let, let the character development of the fruit of the Spirit work in you. Let the fruit grow and mature, mature in you. And then start looking for God to use you. Amen. Grow up, in other words. Grow up some first. Amen. John 4.18. Uh, this one, you know, we, we have, preachers have, did all kind of stuff to this particular passage of scripture. The woman at the well. Amen. Jesus is having a dialogue with the woman at the well. And the woman is asking Jesus in the 15th chapter, in the 15th verse, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. And Jesus said, Okay, go call your husband and come hither. And the woman answered and said, I have no husband. And Jesus said, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. But thou hast had five husbands. And who and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. Now, we've dealt with this all kind of ways. Some people made her out to be some harlot. But the Bible says she had five husbands. She didn't have five shackmates. She had five husbands, and nothing. 
Actually, nothing was wrong with that. Depends on what the situation was. Hmm? But when he says, and, that conjunction there, he whom thou now hast is not thy husband, that has a problem. There is a problem. Either she's with somebody that's already married, or the two of them are shacking. One or the other. It could be something else, but then again, from what I see. Amen. Well, what is revealed? God, the Jesus re, is it's revealed by way of the Spirit to Jesus that 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 she doesn't have a husband and that she's had five husbands and the one she's with now is not her husband. And the first thing she says, "I perceive that thou art a prophet." In other words, you're revealing something. He got her attention. Hmm? He got her attention so that right after this, she goes and tells the whole town. And the whole town comes out and gets saved. Hmm? There was purpose in what he was doing. He wasn't just revealing stuff to, 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 to stick his shoulders up, stick his head up, wag his head, talk about how great I am. Hmm? There was purpose in it. Amen. And let me say this again, and, and I know I say this every every year, every week I say this, and I'm going to keep on saying it because it's true. He did this as the Son of Man, not as the Son of God. Everything that Jesus did, hello, everything he did, he did as man. He came into the earth realm as man through the womb of a woman just like you and I. And guess what? He operated as a man filled with the Holy Spirit and he had authority to do some things. Amen. All of the gifts were in our per perfect operation turned them to the highest level on each one. That's one thing that you have to learn about all of these gifts. They have they have, they have a, 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 a knob, if you please. <laughs> they can be turned on to any level, but only the Holy Spirit can do it. You can't turn it on. You can't turn it off. It, it, it ain't the Holy Spirit if you can. Amen. Now, the word of knowledge ha has been revealed. Now, in John 5, 6, another, another good one. I'm not going to be long. I'm, I'm just about to. When Jesus, uh, 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 let's, let's, let's do the whole story and then we'll finish up. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and the Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And there was at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of in, in, impotent folk, did I say that right? A blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. Hmm? And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. And when Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? See, it was revealed to Jesus by way of the Spirit, a word of knowledge. That he had been a long time. The, the, the writer tells us up, up above that it's in, in, in the fifth verse that it's 38 years. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus, that Jesus, in, in Jesus' part of the narrative, it says that he knew that he had been there for a long time. 38 years is a long time. It's a long time. And Jesus knew that. And look at the question that he asked. Will thou be made whole? He'd been there a long time. And, and, and do you see how he asked the question based on the knowledge that he got? The word of knowledge gave him certain knowledge. So he approached him from the knowledge that he had. Will you be made whole? You be, he didn't say it. But you've been here a long time. And you ain't healed yet. Will you be made whole? And, and so I wanted to show purpose. I wanted to show purpose. Last one, and we'll be through. Mark 2 and 8. Mark 2 and 8. 
because this one says it uh, so much better. Uh, I, I wanted to do this one. Now this 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 is this is when the four men were carrying the man with the palsy in, and Jesus healed him. The Bible says in the fifth verse of the second chapter of Mark, when Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their heart, Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit, and, 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 and that's exactly what happens when we get a word. We perceive it in our, feel, in our spirit. We don't feel it. Hello, I feel something. No, 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 no. You perceive it in your spirit. It's, it, it's given to you in your spirit. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. That's where we're enlightened at. That's where we are enlightened at. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of man, is the candle of the Lord. That's where he's enlightened. That's where we perceive things that's from God, in the spirit man. Hmm? I wanted to bring that out. When Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reason within themselves. Now, 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 he's not just talking about one person here. Now, did you hear that? He's not talking about just one person. He's talking about the group. He's talking about the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the scribes that were present. A group of people, and he knew they were all saying and thinking the same thing. Hmm? And the man was healed. You said, well, Bro Paul, that, uh, you, you, we know Jesus was used like that. Tell me at least one time that you were used, and, 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 and that will be enough for us. Yes, it will. I'm going to pick out one here. No, nope, that's not the right one. Okay. Uh, okay. Here, 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 here's here's something that was that was I thought was very interesting. It's something that just happened Friday. I used to have a lot of dreams about a large black snake attacking me in my dreams. The the snake would come up into the bedroom and get in bed with me, and I'd wrestle it, kill it. Usually I cook it and eat it, and 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 see I, I've learned to control my dreams. Dreams just don't come up and just scare me. I, I control my dreams. I've done everything to it. I fried it. I baked it. I barbecued it. I did everything. I shared it with my neighbors. Amen. I, I the, in the dream, a big black snake was coming into me into my a bedroom and getting in the bed with me. All kind of crazy things happening. It kept happening. So one Sunday, I got home, I came home from church, and I'm saying, all of these mold tracks in the in the yard. There's so many molds in this place. I'm walking around looking at the mold tracks, and then I felt something behind me, and I looked around. There it was, a big black snake. Hello, a big black snake, and I killed it. I killed snakes. I don't run from snakes. I killed it. I killed a snake, and I picked it up with the shovel that I killed it with, and it was four and a half feet long. Black snake. Black snake won't harm you. He'll bite you, but he won't harm you. He's, he's not poisonous. So, what God had revealed to me in the dream was that it was a black snake on the property. Now, how in the world are you going to say what you're going to say, Paul? I got to say it. It was the same snake in my dream. I looked him in the eye. It was the same snake. God had revealed to me the snake was on the property. You say, what? Yes, yes, yes. So I would look out for the snake. I didn't know it. I didn't know what God was doing until after he did it. Now, how many of y'all have had that experience? You didn't know God was was actually doing something in you till after it was over. <laughs> oh, that was God, man. That, I, that happens. Another 
instance that I'm going to be through. I keep saying that, don't I? <laughs> the Spirit showed me a balcony in the church when we was at Revival Temple. I went to Pastor Carter and I said, Look, God showed me in a vision that there's a to put a balcony in the church. And Pastor, being a man of wisdom, he said, But Paul, you need to get the revelation of what he's showing you. He showed you a balcony, but that don't mean that you got to put a balcony. I said, well, I can draw it up. I can draw it up and I can build it for you. He said, no, 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 no. You just, you need to wait. You need to be still. Don't do nothing until we know for sure what he's showing you. I said, okay, fine, fine, fine. I finally settled down. And, and one day we were looking for some storage space because we had ran out of storage place to put stuff. So the pastor said, there's a... There's a ceiling, uh, access panel in the ceiling here. Why don't you go up there and see what's in the room in the attic? I said, okay, I'll go up and see whether there's any room in the attic. I went up to see if there was any room in the attic. And there was a large room over the back of the church. Big enough to hold 200 people. Huh? When they built it, they didn't do the elevation right and they they built it too tall so when they built it too tall it wasn't usable but it was enough space there for 200 people and an attic over top of that amen amen a 10 foot ceiling and then another and then an attic and I looked at it I just went off just start praising the Lord and then I remembered that's what God showed you. He showed you an attic with 200 people in it. Hmm? The vision that he showed you was a vision. Hello? A vision of an attic with 200 people. They walled it up because they made a mistake and they didn't catch the mistake. In order to, 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 to it could have been made useful but it would have been uh, tearing the, the front part of the church apart and, and redoing the thing. So they just walled it up. They made a mistake. They walled it up. But God knew. God knew that space was there. Not only did he know it was there, he showed it to us so that we could utilize that space. Now, now I'm going to do this last one. <laughs> Paul, you've been doing the last one for a while now. <laughs> this is the fast one. The Holy Spirit showed me in a vision. My grandson was, 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 was sneaking women, sneaking girls. He's a teenager, sneaking girls in his bedroom. So I called my son up. I said, hey, hey man, your son is, is sneaking girls in, in, in the house. He said, he said, yes. He said, he said, yes, he is, and I can't, I can't catch him, though. He said, but how do you know? You live in Maryland. And he lives in Tacoma, Washington. That's 3,000 miles if you, if you want to check it. But, 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 but 3,000 miles away, God was able to reveal knowledge. Hello? Reveal knowledge that would be useful. Hmm? God is good. God has been doing good things for a long time. And let me tell you something. He's not through. Amen. The gift of the word of knowledge is a very important gift. He gives us knowledge. Hmm? It even helps us in our studies. The Bible said he, 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 will, he will bring things back to our remembrance. The things that we've, we've, we've remembered, he will bring it back to our remembrance. He'll bring it back to you. If you studied stuff and you were in school, he'll bring it back. If you just sit there and relax, don't get anxious. He'll bring it back to your remembrance and give you the grade that you deserve. Amen. Amen. He ain't going to give you a grade that you don't deserve. He's going to give you the grade that you do deserve. Amen. Amen. I thank and praise God today. Happy Father's Day to all of you. Let's dismiss. Father, we thank you. We praise you for all things in the name of Jesus. We thank you that you love us. And even this day, God, we ask, Lord God, that you go with us as we go from this place and that we will enjoy the rest of our Father's Day celebration. Help us, Lord God, and give us the word of knowledge 
of whenever we need it. We don't seek it. We know it's just going to happen. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.